so I think this time Richard has to ask me a question because we're almost to 40 videos or 39 bro 39 ask me a question I'm interested Make in it. Bruce De Palma. Oh, you really? Keep mentioning him. Okay, well, this video is dedicated to Bruce, number 39. Uh, he, I know he's had tremendous uh, mm -hmm. impact mm -hmm. uh, in terms of understanding and in terms okay. of developing new concepts in physics mm -hmm. and so forth, and you're his protege. Well, I referred to one of his experiments in the previous video, so check that out if you want to, um, where he took a 78 RPM record platter and grew grass suspended above the platter, not on the platter, but above it. And the rotating force fields generated over time affected the growth patterns of the grass. No change in lighting, no change in watering patterns, nothing. Just the 78 RPM disc. He also found that a bull of a watch known as the Accutron was affected by rotating masses operating near it because uh, that is a tuning fork actuated watch. That's what gives it the momentum to drive gears and stuff, is a tuning fork that's electrically resonated by the battery in there or something to that effect. But at any rate, um, he found that there were unknown force fields surrounding rotating objects that he discovered by building complex machinery no one had ever before envisioned namely the force machine, or machines, he built force machines. Uh, these are, he discovered that these had inertial properties that were in variance to the standard theory, okay? Namely, variable inertia. He also discovered that simply by uh, shooting a um, spinning ball bearing at 26,000 RPM up in the air next to one that was not, showed very, and then doing um, stroboscopic photography on the path of the two balls, showed a very different trajectory for that f fast rotating ball. Okay, so people can argue aerodynamics and all that stuff, but there are many different experiments. The force machines were rotated near each other and they seemed to drag against one another. They were collided and they gave off more energy. Momentum was not conserved. Um, when one was rotating and the other was not, the rotating and non-rotating object collision was done. The dropping of a spinning ball bearing was done in another form the, uh, where an, a gyroscope was constrained and allowed to drop inside a box. Now here's the thing. Let's fast forward to the 21st century. I want to build a machine that is effectively doing all that stuff at a higher order, building on what Bruce himself was designing, which was counter-rotating objects that can be rotated in multiple dimensions, not just two or three, precession and nutation, but also in perhaps more complex ways, so we can generate more torsion and more torsion and interrupt the inertial field around some of these massive objects and see what kind of strange resonances will be produced in these objects. Now, going back to De Palma's fundamental work, however, uh, we need to know that he also uh, took great pains to do the mathematical formulas on all of his data that would have established a mean uh, variation, you know, um, in the in the results. So averaging out the results still produced some anomalous readings. But let's not focus on De Palma alone, because others have shown um, strange and wonderful effects. Even Eric Lathwaite, as I had mentioned in a previous video of BBC fame who was effectively a colleague of Bruce De Palma's, was saying that the forced precession of gyroscopes is the way to build a space drive. He was just pretty much saying that. Take this gyroscope, figure a way to force precess it. That means rotate it at 90 degrees to its axis of rotation. And that's what De Palma did with his force machines, okay? Canceling out the gyroscopic forces of two counter-rotating gy gyroscopes inside another cylinder so the motors and everything were mounted inside a giant cylinder. Then this whole thing could be 
treat it as a rotating object free of gyroscopic influences because all gyroscopic motions are cancelled in this machine. Anyway, what he discovered was there was a higher inertial mass for motions along the axis of rotation and a lowered inertial mass for motions along the plane of rotation. Okay. So anyway, these are some of the works that he did before he even decided to rotate a magnetized gyroscope and build free energy machines. He was big into the idea that an anti-gravity machine, based on torsion, based on whatever you want to call it, inertial field propulsion, um, would liberate humankind from the constraints of a industrialized society ruled by a few superpowers of industrial might and military force. You know, we could be a scientific counterpoise to the elitist agendas if we, the people, were making free energy and anti-gravity machines for each other based on some of these essential breakthroughs and understandings of physics. De Palma believed very heartily that we were here for each other. He grew up in a Quaker environment. I think he believed we had to make our lives about serving others and um, peace. So free energy could bring peace. It also could bring an era of unprecedented destruction if people misused it. But we're not talking about free energy. We're just talking about inertial fields and how they relate to torsion. They can be generated scientifically. I believe they can be generated through consciousness as well. We've already reviewed that in a previous video. But the Palma passed away in New Zealand where he had lived a number of very active and even also restful enriching years in uh, relative tranquility uh, and also working on free energy machines. But he never got a chance to go back to his initial work with the gyroscopes, the uh, counter-rotating gyroscopes. I want to couple, effectively, all of his work in a machine that will do three distinct things. It will generate electricity through rotating magnets. It will resonate members that are gyroscopes in novel ways so that they can produce at least three, possibly four or more orders of rotation. And then we'll see. Maybe increased electrical power generation results as a result of um, inertial field variation. I don't know. That would be a very interesting thing to discover uh, because that could actually mean that time itself is being affected by these machines. Uh, then we have to see if one machine can affect another one nearby. We will continue this discussion. Thank you.